understanding sharps and flats for the guitar. The sharp symbol looks like a hash or a blank game of noughts and crosses, and the flat symbol looks like a small b. In fact, on many websites, the small b is used as a flat symbol because they are so similar. A sharp is a semitone up, and a flat is a semitone down. On a guitar, a semitone is a single fret. So, a sharp would be one fret up, and a flat would be one fret down. So, let's illustrate this on a guitar to make it perfectly clear. We'll start with the sharp. The first thing we need to do is define what is up and what is down on a guitar. Moving up a fret or up the fretboard means moving towards the bridge or the tailpiece of the guitar. And moving down a fret or down the fretboard means moving towards the nut or the headstock where you tune the guitar. This is because we're talking about pitch now. So, when you move up the neck of the guitar towards the tailpiece, the pitch gets higher and higher and higher and is therefore moving up. Conversely, if you move down the guitar towards the headstock, it goes lower and lower and lower. Therefore, to move up the guitar is towards the tailpiece and moving down the guitar is towards the headstock. So, looking at sharps and flats from a practical point of view, what it means is, if you get, for example, a G and move it up one fret, it will be G sharp. If you take an A and move that up one fret, it will be A sharp. Now, if you take the G and move it down a fret, it will be G flat. Same with A. If you take the A and move it down one fret, it will be A flat. This simple rule works in the vast majority of cases. So, for example, if you were looking for a B flat chord, you could use a first position bar chord. You'd select the B and then simply move it down a fret to make it B flat. Or if you prefer, you can take the second position B and move that down by a fret to create B flat. The same rule will work for sharps. So if you were to get a G major in the third fret and take it up to the fourth fret, it would become G sharp major. Also, if you were to take the A in the 5th fret and take that up to the 6th fret or upper semitone and that would be A sharp. And this rule doesn't stop with the majors and the minors. If you were to take, for example, an F minor 7th in the 1st fret and take it up by a fret to the 2nd fret, it would be F sharp minor 7th. And this rule even applies to scales. So if you know the G major scale, which starts on the 3rd fret, if you play the same scale, but starting on the 4th fret, it would be a G sharp major. Or if you take the same scale and start it on the 2nd fret, it would be G flat major. Sharps and flats then are quite easy to understand, but there are one or two small issues that do cause problems. For example, overlapping notes. So, to illustrate this, we'll take the second fret, which is the F sharp, but also the same note is G flat. If you take the F up by one fret, it becomes F sharp, and that is in the second fret. However, if you take the G down one fret, it becomes G flat. This is also in the second fret. This means you can have one note or one chord with two potential names and that name would be decided by the key signature but this is a lesson for a later date. Another place where questions arise is in the gap between E and F and B and C because there is no blank fret but again this is a question to be answered in a later lesson. In conclusion then the sharps and the flats fill in the spaces between the main notes on the fretboard and this then gives you a far greater knowledge of the fretboard as a whole.